Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today we'll be painting the Paladin from Vast the Mysterious Manor by Leader Games. This series is geared towards the beginning painter, so before we get started, let's talk about the equipment that you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need brushes. I am using a Winsor & Newton Series 7 size 1 brush for most of my work. For fine detail work, I also use a size triple zero. The specific brush you use is not important. What is important is that you have a nice sharp tip on the end. You're also going to want to have a palette to put your paint on and to do your mixes. I'm using a wet palette, which lets you use the paint for longer without it drying up. But you can always use a plastic palette from a craft store or even a paper plate if you don't have anything else. Lastly, you might want to get something to mount your miniature on while you're painting to help keep paint off your fingers and to keep your fingers from rubbing paint off and ruining your hard work. I'm using these little wooden barrels that I got from a craft store and I'm attaching the miniature using a little piece of sticky tack. With that out of the way, let's look at the steps we're going to follow to bring this miniature to the tabletop. First, we're going to prime the miniature. This will give the paint something to adhere to and will help us to identify the areas of light and shadow for where we're going to put our highlights later. Next, we'll apply our base colors, followed by some shading and some highlights. After that, we're going to apply dark lining between all of the different portions of the miniature, which will add contrast and interest. Finally, we'll paint the base and apply a finishing spray to protect the miniature. First, we'll prime the miniature in black. I'm using Vallejo's black primer through an airbrush, but you could just as easily brush this on directly or spray primer from a can. Next, we'll spray white primer from above the miniature. This is going to bring out the areas that we're going to want to highlight later. Now we're going to apply the base colors. First, we'll paint the skin with black or brown. You may need to apply more than one coat to get smooth coverage. Next, we're going to paint the entire tunic with Iraqi sand. This will serve for the brown part of the tunic, but it will also give us an undercoat for the yellow parts of the tunic. Yellow is a really difficult color to work with because it doesn't cover that well. So you almost always want to apply an undercoat first. Now we'll use Vallejo Model Color English Uniform to paint all the brown areas. This is going to include the belt, the scabbard, and the sleeves. If you happen to get paint somewhere where you don't want it, it's not a big deal at this stage. You can just go back with the other color and paint over top of it. Now we're going to paint the yellow parts of the tunic. Yellow is one of the hardest colors to paint because it has very poor coverage and it shows brush strokes. So what we're going to do to mitigate that is mix it with a little bit of flow enhancer. This should help us get rid of those brush strokes, but you'll require multiple coats to get even coverage. Next we're going to paint the boots and the fur cloak with Londonist Gray. We're also going to use this color to paint the trim at the bottom of the tunic. When painting highly textured surfaces like this cloak, it might be helpful to thin your paint a little bit with some water to make sure it gets down in all those recesses. Um, again, you may need multiple coats. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to take an opportunity here to add some preliminary highlights to the cloak using a technique called dry brushing. Let's add a little bit of Vallejo model color ivory in with the gray to get a lighter tone. We're going to switch brushes here for dry brushing to a flat brush. Um, this is actually a dry brush from Citadel that's meant for this purpose. Load that up with paint and then start wiping it on a paper towel until there's almost no paint left. Now we'll apply this using a series of sharp brush strokes going against the grain. What this is going to do is deposit paint on the raised areas and provide a nice contrast for us without a lot of effort. Dry brushing is extremely effective for highly textured surfaces like this fur cloak. Now we're going to hit the shoulders with some Vallejo model color khaki. The reason we did the dry brushing before finishing the base coat was because dry brushing can be a pretty rough technique and it can be easy to get paint where you don't want it. So doing it first before we base coat the surrounding areas means we're not accidentally hitting the stuff that we've already painted. Here we're going to apply the khaki to the medallions on the chest. We'll use this as a base for the darkest part of a non-metallic gold effect that we're going to add later during the highlight step. We'll also use this on the sword hilt. Now we're going to paint the couple parts of metal using Mechanicus Standard Gray. This is going to be the belt buckle and the cross guard of the sword. We're going to apply a non-metallic metal effect to this as well in the highlighting stage. Now we're going to paint the hair using Vallejo model color black gray. Avoiding pure black for this gives us somewhere to go to shade the hair down later. We'll also use this for the eyes and eyebrows. Now we'll add some shade and highlights. First we'll apply a wash to the fur cloak using Citadel's Non Oil. A wash is a thin down paint that flows down into the recesses and is really effective on highly textured surfaces like this fur. I recommend using an older brush for this that you don't care too much about because the wash can get up into the ferrule and ruin the bristles. We'll also use the non oil to shade the trim at the bottom of the tunic. Next, we'll apply Citadel's Agrax Earthshade to all the brown parts of the miniature. This includes the sleeves, the belt, and the scabbard. Try to avoid the wash from pooling on flat areas like the top of the scabbard. Let the washes dry completely before continuing. Now we'll highlight the brown areas with Vallejo model color English uniform. Thin this down with a little bit of water so that the paint remains a little bit transparent. This way we can build up the color with several different layers. We add highlights like this because the miniature is really too small to cast realistic shadows. So we manually add the highlights where we would expect the light to be most prominent on the miniature. And this can provide an illusion that the miniature is full size or larger than it really is. It also provides contrast so that you can pick out those details on the tabletop from a few feet away. Try to imagine an overhead light hitting the miniature from directly above. This should help you to decide where you should place the highlights. Here we're putting highlights on the top of the arm and also the uh, protruding parts of the scabbard 
and uh, the top of the belt. Try to avoid the recesses where the shadows would be deeper. Now we're going to add a little bit of Iraqi sand to the English uniform and repeat this process, just highlighting a slightly smaller area this time to increase the highlight. To add a little bit of interest and bring out the shape of the scabbard, we're going to apply an edge highlight by loading our brush with paint and running the side of the brush along those edges to leave a nice thin line. Highlighting the edges of something made of leather can give the illusion that there is some wear and tear on that object. Next we'll highlight the shoulders using khaki mixed with a little bit of Vallejo model color ivory. We'll highlight the trim at the bottom of the tunic next using the original base color, Lindenous Gray. We can use the base color here because we applied a wash earlier, which darkened it overall. So the base color does give us a little bit more of a highlight. Now we'll mix a little bit of ivory into the gray and apply it to the boots and also go over the trim again with this. For the boots, we're going to highlight the top of the foot down to the toe, and we'll also concentrate our highlights where the folds are on the lower part of the leg. Add a touch more ivory and do this again, just covering a slightly smaller area this time. the trim again with this, just giving those highlights a little bit more of a boost. Next we're going to highlight the skin using a mix of the base color black or brown with some ivory. We're not going to go too high with the highlights here because I want to keep the look pretty flat to stay with the cartoon aesthetic. When highlighting hands, pay special attention to the knuckles and individual fingers. Picking those out will make them nice and visible when on the tabletop. Here we're going to highlight the face, focusing our highlights along the forehead, the nose, and the cheekbones. Also want to put a spot of highlight on the top of the ears. 
Again, we'll mix in a little bit more ivory and we'll repeat this on a slightly smaller area. Now we're going to apply a metal effect to the belt buckle and the sword cross guard. We're going to use non-metallic paint to simulate a metal effect similar to what you would do in 2D artwork. We're going to build up a light spot in the upper left hand corner of the belt buckle. We'll also create light spots in the upper and lower tips of the cross guard on either side. Add some more ivory to the gray and continue this in a slightly smaller area. We're going to achieve the metal effect by repeating this process several times, each time adding a bit more ivory and covering a slightly smaller area. For non-metallic metal effects like this, it's not super important where precisely you put the highlights. It's just the transition from dark to light that really sells the illusion. We're now very close to pure ivory, and we're going to use this to apply an edge highlight around the entire pieces of metal. This is similar to what we did with the scabbard to bring out the edges earlier. Now we'll paint the medallions on the chest using a gold non-metallic metal effect. For this we're going to use the base color khaki mixed with some ivory and a little bit of citadel aerial yellow to give it more of a golden tone. Drawing inspiration from the artwork from the game, it looks like the light point on the central medallions are all in the middle intersection of the three of them. So we'll focus the light there. The larger medallion seems to have a light point in the middle near the top. Just as before, we're going to continue this several more times, each time adding a little more ivory, adding some aerial yellow as needed, and we're going to reduce the area in which we're painting a little bit each time.
Here I've decided to add a little more variation and pick out the spokes of that central medallion a little bit. Now we're again quite close to pure ivory and we're going to use this to add our final highlight and do an edge highlight around the outside of all the medallions. I'm not too happy with the way that turned out. I think it could be a little more yellow. So we're gonna apply a glaze, mixing some aerial yellow with a little bit of Vallejo glaze medium. A glaze is applied similarly to a wash using a very thin down paint, but we make sure we don't let it pool in the recesses. The purpose of it is to slightly tint the color of the underlying objects. We'll dab the brush on a paper towel a few times to wick off the excess liquid. This gives us more control over the glaze and will help prevent pooling. Now we just apply the glaze over the entire area of the medallions. I think this has ended up looking a lot better. Now we'll highlight the tunic using a mix of Iraqi sand and ivory. We'll focus our highlights near the bottom of the tunic where it starts to flare out a little bit. That's where the light would most directly hit it. I also want to add some highlight around the tips of the sleeves. Just as before with our other highlights, we'll add a little bit more ivory and repeat this over a smaller area. To highlight the yellow parts of the tunic, we'll mix a little bit of ivory in with the flat yellow and also add some flow enhancer again. Just as with the brown, apply this near the bottom of the tunic where it flares out. this with a little more ivory.
Next, we're going to add some dark lining to the figure. This is going to provide contrast between the different portions of fabric and different sections of the miniature. We'll start with some Arbuckles Brown to add lining around the gold medallions. Uh, mix this with a generous amount of water until it's flowing nicely. Arbuckles Brown has a lot of purple in it, so it's a good choice for adding lining for yellow and gold because purple is a complementary color of yellow and it provides some really nice contrast. Here, take your time and trace around all of the medallions with this color. We're going to dark line the rest of the figure using a mix of Vallejo Game Ink Black and English Uniform. Ink is very intense and a little goes a long way, so make sure you add some water to dilute it a bit. Just as we did with the glaze, we're going to wick off the excess liquid on a paper towel before we touch the miniature with the paint. Carefully draw lines between each segment of the tunic. Take a deep breath, take your time, and go slow. If you happen to make a mistake, you can just go over it with the base color again. Add dark lining anywhere there's a transition between two different materials, like two different types of fabric or between the fabric and the skin. Here I'm adding a little bit of dark lining around the belt. Add some dark lining between the fingers to accentuate them. I forgot to highlight the hilt of the sword, so we'll hit that now with some English uniform mixed with some ivory. We'll use Citadel's Non Oil to add some depth to the hair. Brush this from top to bottom, from light to dark. The most paint will be deposited where you lift your brush from the miniature, so that's where your deepest shadows will be. We'll be sure to hit the eyes and eyebrows with this too. In the final step, we'll paint the base and apply a matte varnish that will protect the miniature during gameplay. There are many different ways you could go when basing a miniature. I've just opted to paint the miniature's base the same color as the character for gameplay reasons, but you can feel free to do something more elaborate if you'd like. Since we'll be painting yellow, we'll need to add an undercoat. I'm using Iraqi sand since it's already on my palette, but any light brown or ochre color would probably work fine. When the Iraqi sand is dry, apply some aerial yellow. I had to do four individual coats before I got even coverage. Now we'll use some black to paint the rim of the base. To provide some separation between the base and the miniature, we're going to dark line around the boots using our mix of English Uniform and black ink. Once completely dry, we'll protect the miniature with some spray-on varnish. I prefer Tester Spray Lacquer, but you could use anything with a flat finish. This wraps up the Paladin. Thank you for watching Board with Paint. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Click the bell icon so that you are notified whenever I release a new video. And until next time, happy painting. Bye.